How can a wife who hasn't been encouraging rebuild that relationship with her husband? Is that a question for a wife or a husband? Well, I think we talked about it depends on what you're asking. So um, if it's coming from a woman's perspective who is overwhelmed because you're feeling like I don't even know where to begin and something I failed at, uh, just like anything in scripture, you put off and you put on. And so uh, I would ask him how he wants to be encouraged and then just start, <laughs> start. Um, I guess what I mean is start, start small and it's not going to be something, if this is a habit that you've set, it sounds like it's kind of a set habit. It's a, it's a thing that you've let go for a long time. And so that can be an overwhelming thing to undertake, uh, but it doesn't have to be. And so um, early on in our marriage, part of kind of learning the whole respect part and the communication part for Matt and I, I remember an argument one time where um, I literally just asked him, like, literally give me the words that you want me to say, because I think I'm saying them and you're not hearing them because, <laughs> clearly. So I need, and it was the way hugely helpful because I would never want to hear that. And I don't think the next guy would want to hear that. You know, everyone is different. And so your husband is going to respond differently to things that are encouraging to him. And so really asking him the how to and the what to, uh, don't, don't set that aside as it's off the table and that it means that you don't care because you care enough to ask him. And I think that you, I don't know how you felt about me asking that actually, but you answered it. So was it offensive that I didn't know how you specifically wanted a little to bit, be encouraged? A little bit offensive that you didn't know how. Well, I needed to know. He wants you I to know I shouldn't have him. to tell you. I just want you to know. And I get that too. But do you want the problem solved or do you not? So. Yeah, you know, the one of the, just to kind of as a side note, you know, we just did a marriage conference and Lynn and I go to, go to them every year. So every year there's a marriage conference, we go to them. And it's kind of like an oil uh, change for us. It's just, it's just maintenance. Mm -hmm. And in those uh, times we get to uh, debrief the weekend, and just like we did this last time, is you know, what, did you, what did you glean from it? And um, ask, some, ask some personal questions to each other. And so just, just out of a routine maintenance, I, we go to these things all the time just to ask each other these questions. Um, and, and we've never treated our marriage like we perfected it, although I think we're better at it than anyone else. <laughs> but um, no, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> but uh, there are things that um, you should know about your spouse. And part of that is asking questions. And, and the nice thing, again, about those marriage conferences, it sets up the environment to ask those questions. Uh, but when you guys go out, ask those questions to each other. You know, how can um, how can I show you that I love you? How can I show you that I care? There was a conversation that we had one time where I told Lynn, you know, it really doesn't do much for me when you say I love you. And that was weird for her. She's like, but I do love you. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. That's fine. <laughs> you jerk. I know. It, 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 it befuddled her. I, I don't even know. It might have offended her a little bit. But she said, well, then what am I supposed to say to you? And I said, tell me I'm the best. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear that I'm the best. <clears throat> and so uh, she tells me I'm the best husband. She tells me I'm the best father. Um, I'm the best teacher. Sorry, Steve. In my wife, wife's eyes, I am. And, uh, um, <clears throat> and so that's how she really encourages me. She also knows I like to be greeted at the door. You know, I just like that. I like um, uh, when I come home uh, for everyone to throw a parade, right? And so what's a big deal to him? And it's probably uh, hard for him to tell what that is because granted, that's something that we just want uh, to be naturally done, but you know, we gotta get, get over that too. Um, but find out what it is that uh, touches his heart and um, you know, reaches him. And so and it's probably different for you. And if it is, don't belittle him for that. Well, I don't need anyone to greet me at the door. I don't know why it's a big deal to you. It, it doesn't matter. It's a big deal to him. So if it's a big deal to him, that's okay. And, and that's the sentiment behind the question is if it's a big deal to him, then you shouldn't belittle it. Um, and that's your way of honoring him and showing him respect. I think, um, you know, Matt made the joke that our marriage is better than yours. And I, <laughs> I mean, I kind of understand what he's saying by that. But really, the reality is, I truly think that my husband is the very best one in the entire world. And I'm not saying it to, to, for him to hear. I firmly believe it. But I don't often talk to him as if I think that or remember to say things 
that let him know that I think that. And so uh, you're probably feeling the same way. So Yeah, and that actually stems from a conversation, that, uh, an argument <laughs> that we had a few years ago. Uh, but it was where she said, but you know I don't think any of those things about you, right? I'm like, well, I didn't know that because it seems like all you do is you know, have, tell me what my problems are. I don't think you think anything good of me. She's like, well, I think all these wonderful things. I'm, you never tell me. <laughs> so that was, a, that was an argument that we had one time that was a big blowout, and we haven't had it since. It's actually been really yeah. nice because she's done a good job of telling me constantly. I hear more what she likes about me than what she doesn't. And I see that it was foolish just to assume that you knew that, but really in my mind, it's so true that I was like, well, surely you know. Surely you know that. <laughs> okay, so one of the things that comes up is that when it says uh, rebuild that relationship, I find this all the time in marriage counseling where they're usually coming in because the marriage is somewhat broken, right? They're not coming in because we're doing well, we just want, you know, right. to take it to the next level. I've never heard right. that. Yeah. Please so, do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Encourage us. If you have a great marriage, come make an appointment with us and go, just it's great. It. And, and tell me what to do and encourage us. That would be amazing. Uh, okay. What was I saying? Um, rebuilding. Yeah. So when it's down in the trenches, um, how do you rebuild if God's showing you, obviously, that you need to encourage your husband? And I'm sure, I mean, God tells the men all the stuff too. You just got to start. You got to start somewhere. And so uh, there are things in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 7, 1 Corinthians 13, Ephesians chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 3, that you should have already ingrained in your mind because those are the verses that talk about being a husband or being a spouse. And you can't learn how to be encouraging or how to rebuild if you don't know how God designed us to go after that relationship. So start with that and see what happens. Along with the rebuilding, there has to be this forgiveness um, restoration. And so I don't know how to do that any different than how God does it with us. And that is, I repent. And I ask for forgiveness, and then I do the things that I'm supposed to be doing as a husband until I win my wife. And I don't, I separate the um, outcome, the what I want to have from what I'm doing. Because if you go, well, I'm going to be encouraging, and if you've been beating this guy down for 25 years, and then you make an effort, and you're encouraging for that day, and he's like, what's going on here, and doesn't acknowledge it, you're going to quit. You're going to give up. And so I focus on what God's told me to do, and I do that, and whatever their reaction is, however they take it, is irrelevant. And this is why you have to build it from the Word of God, is God says, why are you serving your spouse? It's a picture of Christ in the church, and it sh you should be treating your husband like he's Jesus. So you're loving him because you love the Lord, and if he's happy and if it comes together the way it's supposed to be and how God designed it, wonderful. But you can't do anything um, for him or go off his reaction because it's going to cave because you have to rebuild 25 years of beating this dude down. So in rebuilding it, you start somewhere. It's with the word of God. And then you just allow the natural process of forgiveness and restoration to take place. And this is where I find people give up. They're like, hey, Matt, I, I tried to be nice to her and I'm in the, in the word and I'm praying and it's not working. And I'm like, I talked to you last week, like you're 25 years in a destroyed marriage and you've been trying for a week. I mean, what's the reality here? Do you think is going to happen? Like you need to not get the same thing with the parenting. You need to be consistent and not give up because you're trying to win this person's heart back that may be destroyed yeah. and there's trust issues and all this other stuff. So yeah. don't be discouraged with the process. It is a process, I guess, is the is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, if you poison the ground for 25 years and you plant a seed, then don't sit here and wonder why you're not growing any healthy fruit. Yeah. And what you're doing is what you should have been doing the whole time anyway, so just yeah. do it. <laughs> okay, uh, one more thing. The flip side to that is don't be the spouse that your your spouse is trying. They're, they're seeing God showing them this. I need to be more encouraging. Build that up, man. So many times people will be like, you know what? You're never going to change. You're always like this. It's like, well, great, great. What do I do with that? You know, it's like I'm, 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 I'm never going to be any different. It's like if you want your spouse to be the spouse that you want, which is usually, in the case of a husband, leader, spiritual leader, praying with you, doing all this stuff. 
Well, then when he makes a little effort, and for she, if she makes a little effort of being encouraging, if you shut her down or whatever, it's like you're, you're, you're doing contrary to what you want your marriage to growth. And so that's why forgiveness and bitterness has to be dealt with because you both have to pour in. It can't be one mm-hmm. on each side. It has to be both together so that God can do a work. So... Yeah, and with that, you know, Lynn and I, when we were in high school, towards our senior year in high school, um, I know she was a year older than me, but uh, there was a guy that came, and he was a Christian that spoke on dating, creative dating, and things like that. He gave a definition to marriage, and we've kept it ever since. It's what we teach our high schoolers. And uh, the definition of love is this, choosing the highest ultimate good for the other person, even if it causes you harm. And what he did is he connected that to Christ. That's where he got the concept, where Christ chose the highest soul. It's Romans 5, 8. God demonstrates his love for us in this, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. So um, he chose the ultimate highest good for us, even though it caused him harm, right? That's love. <laughs> and so um, it's, it's sacrificial. The, the word agape means charitable. It cost me something. And so in 1 Corinthians 13, it says love believes all things. And so um, when your spouse says something, um, you know, do you believe it? Or do you come back and, you know, uh, what Matt was saying, things like you always and you never, in the, in the counseling world, we call those circuit jammers. It's like you go up to the, the circuit board and you flip the switch and then no current can get through. And it's what you do to stop the... Um, the conversation from happening. You say you always, and then, okay, I guess I guess I do. I, there's nowhere to go from here, right? But you start saying um, things on the other hand, like, you know, I love you, and you're forgiven, and um, and then you, you don't believe them in that. And if you're not going to believe the best in your... Um, so one of the questions asked at the marriage conference uh, was, what are the... What would you say are the three um, top points in communication? And one of the, I came up with four, and that was uh, believe the best about the other person, uh, believe what they say, don't put words in their mouths, and um, when someone says something, uh, they have the right to defend. They have the right to define what it is that they they said, and and so um, you have to um, go in with the mindset of I'm believing the best about you, and if if all you're going to do is um, sit here and question everything that they they say then you're setting yourself up for bitterness and when you've got bitterness then the other person doesn't have a chance so um uh what i have to do is uh for example uh he had referenced the fact that the husband is supposed to be like jesus and the wife is supposed to be like the church so jesus is supposed to love I mean, the man is supposed to love his wife like Jesus loves the church. We all know that, right? Well, what happens when you're married to a man that doesn't act like Jesus, <laughs> right? Um, or vice versa. What happens if you're married to a wife that doesn't honor you like the church um, does Jesus? Um, so in the role of, um, you know, in the role of man, what I do is I love her anyway. Um, you know, I'm supposed to act like Jesus, and that's just what I'm supposed to do. Um, but in the role of the woman, what you do is, okay, my husband's not Jesus, but I have Jesus. And so I'm going to do um, unto my husband as, as I would do it unto the Lord. And, um, and Jesus, the, everything that you're longing for from your husband, you get from the Lord. And so, I, you know, I just want to be appreciated. I just want to be loved. And I want someone to talk to me this way. Then get all of that from the Lord. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my um, burden is easy, um, and my, uh, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. <laughs> um, and First Peter says, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. And so all of my hopes and all of my worries and concerns, they go on to the Lord, and I let him give me that peace that passes all understanding. And so a lot of this is a, is a mind thing, and it's connected with your feelings and emotions and things like that. And Philippians 4 talks about whatever things are lovely, whatever things are pure, whatever things are virtuous, um, and that type of stuff. Um, you meditate on those things. And so your mind goes um, to the promises of the Lord and the hope of the Lord and um, what he's He's called you to do, and he takes care of that stuff. And so, um, and then you get a peace that passes all understanding. And so, um, 
and I'm saying that in the sense of just like what we were talking about the kids and what he was saying in the sense of 25 years of um, investing poorly into a marriage is that uh, there's going to be a progression here and how do you get through that progression and it's by walking with Christ and he, he's your hope until, um, until it, it gets restored and so. Amen.